Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the shine Bow to babe on bended knee The savior of humanity Unto us a child is born He shall reign forevermore No In the Gospel of St. Luke we read, So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. Shall we pray? Our gracious God and Father, there is no more beautiful, more perfect gift 
than the gift of a child. Father, we delight in looking into a cradle and seeing a baby, well fed, warm, snug, sleeping soundly. It just melts our hearts. And Father, we would wish to protect that child and cherish him or her and just know and let them know that we, we love them, that they're precious and dear. And Father Mary looked into the manger and saw her baby, Jesus. She loved him, cherished him and wished the very best for him. But Father, she also knew that she was gazing upon God in all his glory and in all his splendour. And yet, Father, weak, helpless and utterly dependent upon her. And so, Father, we pray that this Christmas time we might look into the manger and see Jesus. See the glory of God and not be frightened, but have our hearts melted by his grace, his humility, his meekness, his willingness to come to be our saviour. And so, Father, may our hearts melt with love for the Lord Jesus Christ and may we ever cherish him as our beloved saviour and friend and worship him as our God. So draw near to us now, we pray, through Christ your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, and we'll be reading at chapter 1 from verses 18 to 24. Matthew 1, 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. 
His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his own most holy word. When I left school all these years ago, I got a job in one of our local hospitals in Inverness as a TVNA, a Temporary Vocational Nursing Assistant. It's probably the grandest title I've ever had. And an old guy was admitted to the hospital for what we would call today respite care. And, and I was sent down to befriend him and take him out for walks and kind of look after him. And so I uh, spent a summer 
walking around the hospital grounds with this really lovely old man. He was not tall, maybe five foot five, five foot six. He, he was always wore a very heavy tweed suit and he, he didn't speak at all. He just smiled very sweetly to everyone who saw him and met him. And whenever I walked into his room to take him out for his daily constitutional, his face would just light up. And I, I remember very vividly that at one point in one of our walks, he stopped and walked into one of the flower beds and picked a flower and gave it to me. He was just a delightful old man and I enjoyed my time with him very, very much indeed. And I'm sure to most folk who saw us walking past that I thought, oh, what a lovely old guy. The, the, the other chap, not me. What a lovely old guy. And th they wouldn't have given it another thought, really. But this guy was rather special. He was one of Britain's very great war heroes. In fact, the historian A.J.P. Taylor says that his work, his endeavours, were foundational to the Allied victory over the forces of Nazism. And in his room, on his locker, there was a silver photo frame. And it was this old man in 10 Downing Street in the cabinet room, shaking hands with Churchill. And Churchill presenting him with a great award. For, for this old man's name was Sir Robert Watson Watt. And he was the inventor and the developer of radar. And without radar, the Luftwaffe could very well have bombed the cities of Britain into submission. He was a very, very great man indeed. And as I look back to that summer, I marvel. I, I, it was with a, a degree of incredulity that for that summer, I was this man's best friend. And we walked around the grounds of the hospital together. It was a great, great privilege to know and walk with Sir Robert Watson Watt. And at Christmas time, we celebrate the coming of Emmanuel to our world. Emmanuel, God with us. If, if it's a, a great thing to know a, a war hero like Sir Robert Watson Watt, how much greater to know God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and to walk with him and know his presence and his grace. Now, you, you may have guessed that Sir Robert Watson Watt's great powers had waned, and he didn't choose me as his friend, I was just a TVNA who was sent along to befriend him. But the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul tells us, is the creator of all that is. And, and, and all the glory of being the creator of all that is belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. But he surrendered every claim to that glory in order to come into this world to be our friend. And one of the most beautiful stories in the Gospels is the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And the amazing thing about the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet is that it wasn't a one-off. John tells us this is the way that Jesus was, is, and forever shall be. He is this meek, gentle friend who comes to serve. And so it's an amazing thing to, to meet someone who's famous, who's accomplished great things. And it's a privilege to know such men and women. But how much more, how much greater the privilege of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and walking with him. Now, I'm, I'm quite sure that to most folk who saw us walking round the hospital grounds together, that this old man who was with me was just another old man, just another patient in the hospital. A delightful man, 
a very friendly man, a man with a beautiful smile, but just another patient. The clue to who he was lay in the silver photogram, photo frame on his locker, because there you see the measure of the man, someone whom Churchill honoured, someone whom Churchill recognised as being one of the great heroes of the war, whose, whose work was essential to the survival and triumph of our nation. The, the photo, photo frame told the story. And the, the cross of Calvary is a kind of photograph of the glory of God. It's, it's a snapshot of what God is like. Just as Sir Robert Watson Watts' photograph told the story of his life, the cross of Calvary is a photograph, a snapshot, that tells us of the glory of, of God. Because you see, as Jesus was nailed to the cross, he looked into the eyes of the soldiers who nailed him to the cross and prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as we hear Jesus pray, we see right into the heart of the living God. And what do we see? Meekness, mercy, a yearning for forgiveness and a willingness to pay any price that even the soldiers who nailed him to the cross might know the mercy of God. That, that, that's a, a snapshot, a photograph of the glory of the living God revealed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I look back to that summer, the summer of 1972, uh, it's with a degree of incredulity that I had the privilege of knowing this man, Sir Robert Watson Watt. But, but more than that, as, as we walked round the grounds of the hospital together, I was unaware, really, that I owed this old man everything because if it, if it wasn't for his work, if, if the Nazis had triumphed, would I have been born? If, if I had been born, would I have been working in some Nazi slave camp, indoctrinated with Nazi teaching? That old man played a very important part in my life and an important part in your life. And it's, it's an amazing thing, a privilege to have walked with him and, and known him. And, and it amazes me that the Lord Jesus Christ is, is not someone simply to whom I pray, who, whose words and teaching mean everything to me. He poured out his life at Calvary that I might know forgiveness. I spent a lot of time last year studying Mark's Gospel uh, and I studied in depth about the, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we think about the death of the Lord Jesus, our first thoughts go to the way in which his giving of his life atones for our sin, our wrongdoing. But Mark doesn't underline that in his gospel. He brings out another great truth. Do, do you know why the Pharisees wanted Jesus crucified? They didn't want, they weren't interested in him suffering. That, 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 that was not of major importance to them. What they wanted was Jesus to be utterly humiliated. You see, in Israel, the punishment for blasphemy was not, was not crucifixion, but to be stoned to death. And then the body was taken and fastened to a tree. And the message was, this is the humiliation. This is the degradation of those who blaspheme. They wanted Jesus humiliated. 
It's blasphemy to think of this guy as your Messiah. They wanted Jesus humiliated. They wanted people to turn away from him in disgust. And as I studied this, I realised that one of the things I fear most in life is humiliation. That the truth about the wrong things I do, the wrong things I say, the, the wrong things I think would be made public. That my name would be on the front page of one of the tabloid newspapers, that my mother would turn on the television and hear my name in the news. I fear humiliation. And the Lord Jesus Christ endured humiliation at Calvary. That when we stand before God, we're not humiliated, but forgiven. His grace and mercy poured out upon us that we might be raised to the life eternal and share in his resurrection. I owe Jesus everything. And so it was a great privilege for me that summer to know Sir Robert Watson Watt. His secret of his accomplishments lay in that photo frame as he shook hands with Churchill and I owed him everything. At Christmas we celebrate Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. We see the glory of God at the cross of Calvary and we owe this Jesus everything. And so may you know the joy and the delight of Emmanuel, God with us, this Christmas and every Christmas that lies before you until you stand with him in glory. Amen. Shall we pray? Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world willingly and it is his joy to befriend and to bring your grace and mercy into the lives of those who turn to him. And so, Father, we turn to him now and seek his mercy and place ourselves in his care. And, Father, we look forward to walking with him in the days that lie before us. In his name we pray. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our keep. Joy